a topic I like to talk about every year. And uh, I, I meant to do this earlier. I was kind of battling a cold the last week, so just wasn't able to create any content. Uh, but this is something I, I kind of enjoy doing every year and really um, looking at the division and, you know, realistically looking at it to see where they can go, where's the holes, you know, where's the strengths, where's the, where's the weaknesses. And, you know, 99% of what they've been doing with this TNA rebrand right now has been tremendous. And the one area that has just always been a strength with TNA throughout the years, it even, didn't even matter if it was Global Force Wrestling Impact, whatever, the Knockouts division has always been a strength. It's always been a place where they've had success recruiting free agents and, uh, you know, bringing in young talent, you know, because it the alternative that it provides and has provided over the years compared to the other companies is just unmatched. Gail Kim made a comment the other day about Ash by elegance saying, you know, it, well, she, it was not so much about her, but just talking about the division in general that, you know, if we bring you on and this for the most part for TNA's roster in general, but if we bring you on to be a knockout for the most part, we're going to use you. We're going to find a place for you. You know, she says, as opposed to going over to, in AEW, and I don't remember her last her her exact words, but you know, insinuating that you can get you can get lost in the sauce very easily. There, you can get lost in the sauce. She didn't say this. I'm saying it in WWE very easily. You know, like this is the one place uh, where you can really get a a, a focus because it's a smaller company, but the division is also very very strong. You know. Um, NWA does a pretty good job with their women's division as well, but I mean, there's just, and Billy Corgan can say all day, they have the best women's division. They don't, they have a good one. It's not the best. Like the knockouts will always be the knockouts. There was a down period, maybe, maybe kind of like the pop TV era where there was a lot of talented girls, but there was, there was also a lot on the roster who didn't wrestle. Uh, Rose, Rosemary did not wrestle for a long time. Uh, Raquel, Ali, Maria Canellis, and they took up, you know, a third of the roster. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're in a we're in an overall decent place right now, but uh, we're not in a great place because um, we've had we have Mickey James has left recently, and Mickey's always someone that you see pop in and out. Um, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be surprised if, you know, a year from now she didn't show up again. And this is, this is the, you know, the last, last rodeo. So, you know, maybe, maybe she shows up. We had Trinity depart, which really should come of a shock to nobody. I don't think any level headed fan expected her, her run to last more than, you know, six months or so. So, what she show up a couple months before Bound for Glory, so it sounds like about a six, <laughs> six, seventh month run. So we've been we've we've become accustomed to their business model and uh, the way their budget is allocated, and we just know that some of these bigger names are going to come and do shorter runs. However, she is gone again. Mickey gone. Um, Right there alone, very, very big blow. And then you lose Deanna Perrazzo, who, you know, I, I really think was mishandled on the way out the door. You know, there was probably, you know, Scott doesn't have a, I would say Scott DeMore doesn't have a history of like bearing someone on the way out the door, but I, I don't feel like the, I and this is without any kind of knowledge, I don't feel like the exit was extremely amicable because that wouldn't, she wouldn't have lost like that on the way out the door. Um, someone posted Deanna Prazo's impact record from 2023, and it was like 16 and 14. That's ridiculous. A couple matches over 500. But I bring that up because I think it was a bad look on the division because because this is a place you can come and as a as a woman and 
and really shine, um, really prosper. I don't think it's a good look to to have one of your top females look the way she did going out the door. You know, so um, neither here nor there, though, because she's not here. But uh, that does pose a little bit of a problem because now you've you've lost three of the top talents that you had in 2023. Right now, Jordan Grace is a knockout champion. She's probably going to be in a knockout champion for the majority of the year. <laughs> it, it just you go up and down the roster and there's just not a lot of people. Um, it's a deep roster. Trust me, every single time on Twitter, I see a conversation about the knockouts division lacking at the top, which it is, you know, someone posts their graphics. There's a lot of fan made graphics out there of the roster. It's like, no, look at this roster. The roster is a deep roster. It is. That's not what I'm saying at all. Much like the men, though. Well, the men, the men's roster is improving, but the men's roster over the years, it's it's lacking a little juice at the top so we've got jordan obviously the knockouts champion um we've got the tag team champions of decay so rosemary and havoc um but what i'm what i'm kind of discussing here is who who can be at the top of this division this, this is this is kind of the point of what i'm saying is right now we're just lacking at the top rosemary or havoc i'm confident in saying that neither will be the knockouts world champion at any time in 2024. Um, I would say Ash by elegance, just by the nature of what the, the the nature of what TNA has done in the years, just their history. She will probably be wrestling for <laughs> the title at some point this year at one of the bigger pay per views. She will probably be the one to beat Jordan Grace. There, there's no one else on here who who I could really see doing it. Um, Danny Luna and and uh, Jody Redhair, like they're probably going to get a uh, they they're probably going to get a tag team run this year. They're probably going to challenge for the titles at some point. I don't see them winning necessarily. And while I find them both uh, talented in their own right, there's nothing to suggest to me that we'll see them at the top of the card in 2024. I just don't really see that happening. Um, Giselle Shaw, that's probably the one on this list that, um, you know, they beat her like a drum also last year. But I think they're giving her a bit of a push this year. Um, there's only so many times you can wrestle for the freaking knockouts title and lose, though. She has had many title matches. There was the one that I said was completely unnecessary versus Mickey James. Um, if you guys remember, Giselle came out, cut this great promo to Mickey that I praised. She said, you've wrestled a Giselle Shaw, but you've not wrestled this Giselle Shaw. And they made it look like they were really going to push her and give her this nice little build for a bit. And then Santino, oh no, Gail came, came out and made the match for the next week. And completely shit on everything that Giselle did within that promo. But um, she's the one... There, there's a possibility that she could be the uh, knockouts champion at some point this year. So I'm, I'm going to say that 75% of the year, Jordan's going to have the title. And I think Giselle may have a little bit of a run there. And um, I, I'm pretty confident saying Ash is going to win at some point too, because the, you just have to look at the history. The best predictor of the future is the past. And we know what, what Scott does. We know what they have done before Scott. And, you know, Ash is going to be the fucking champion. Um, you you know, it's funny. I'm looking at this this roster page, and it's like you've got 50 versions of Sue Young and Havoc and Rosemary on here. It makes it look like the roster is a lot bigger than it, <laughs> than it truly is. Um, obviously, with Alicia Edwards, we're not going to see her at the top of the card, but she's highly featured right now. But in the role she's in, I don't know how much wrestling she's going to do. Um, but she's highly featured and she's been doing much better work as a heel than as a baby face. Uh, it's a lot more entertaining, it's a little more believable. The system is going to be the, one of the hottest things in the company this year, if not the hottest thing. So that's going to help her quite a bit, but they have a lot of rehabilitating to do if they want to 
get her winning matches. Now, Killer Kelly and uh, MK Ultra, so Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich. I haven't watched last night's Impact yet, but I was there for the tapings. I know that they are going heel. And either of these two can be at the top of the card. I just don't see that they will. Um, I think they dropped the titles in order to facilitate the the heel change. And I think they're going to get those titles back from Decay, but I think they're going to milk out milk this uh, this feud with Decay for a while because you have nothing else, you know, tag team wise, absolutely nothing else. You got um, you know Jody Thread and Danny Loon, and that that's that's really it. So I think they're going to kind of milk this for a while. I don't see either of these two at the top of the card at any point during the year, but next year, I absolutely, oops, absolutely do. I could. I could very well see it. Um, and then Kylan King, you know, that is a really unfortunate one because she did uh, suffer the injury. And I don't remember exactly what it was. I did watch her Facebook video and, uh, you know, my heart broke for her as I think with a lot of the fans. And, you know, she won the one to watch for award, the cursed award, uh, you know, that I always call it. And, man, she would have been an just excellent for ultimate x or something like she she's when they first brought her on and she wasn't signed i said this is exactly who they need like i always thought she had real real star potential um they looked like they were going to keep her in AEW for a bit because on AEW dark she was the one wrestling in the dark in the jobber matches not as the jobber though uh so usually that means you're kind of getting to that next level uh, but they didn't end up keeping her and thank God the Coven thing did not last long because that was really one of the worst parts of Impact Television in years. Now, it did get better throughout time, but she was the better part. I mean, she was the more entertaining part of it, and she was just going along with the gimmick. This was Taylor Wilde's baby, and T- Kylan King was the one that stood out more for me, um, maybe because she just wasn't so silly. But she can cut a great promo, got a great look, and she can have a hell of of a feud with Jordan Grace at one point. Um, it would be really interesting just the size differences uh, of Kylan King being, you know, six one or whatever, and Jordan Grace being five two, five three, whatever she is. But, you know, I think they could do something really interesting. Um, but she's the one that when she returns from injury, like that's that's your main eventer. That's you know, she's going to ultimately be a baby face and she's gonna be a big baby face when it happens. Like you know, you, you what they got coming with Kylan King is going to be huge. And it's just a matter of us getting there and getting through. She's going to be out pretty much the whole year, unfortunately. Um, but when she makes that return, uh, I'm telling you, it's just going to be off the absolute charts. You know, I don't think you can uh, make her a heel at this point. You know, just usually when you have a returning wrestler, it just works for them to come back as, as a uh, baby face. Um, Savannah Evans has been hanging around for a while. She's just kind of been in the same role for a really, really, really long time. Doesn't get a lot of opportunity to wrestle. Um, so she's going to be a utility player going forward probably. I I don't see them pulling the trigger on her in any way. Now, they are kind of teasing a little bit with Gail Kim. Um you know, letting Giselle Shaw know that she doesn't need them. And it's, I just don't think Giselle would thrive in a baby face role. I, I think, I, I think the Shaw Taraj works. I, I wouldn't break them up, uh, but who knows, who knows what they're doing. But I just feel like even if they did break them up, that Savannah Evans would just go be a muscle for someone else. <laughs> it just, it just seems like that's what they're going to do with her. Um, and then you've got Tasha Steele's who she is the one, man. Um, I'm just really shocked that they haven't gone the babyface route with her yet, that they just, you know, they just haven't gone there. Um, she's really, really over from when, I, from when I was there. And maybe it's just they don't feel like in, in a good guy role, a good girl role, that she she can have the same um, effect and impact. Like, you know, and maybe that maybe that's what it is. She's been really, really off and on TV. But I think the company would benefit for, from her having a lot more screen time or promo time because when she was doing stuff with Kara Hogan, it was it was really, really good. Um, 
I wouldn't be shocked to see Kira Hogan back at some point. I wouldn't be shocked to see Ali back this year. I think I think that's absolutely going to happen. Actually, um, I don't know why I went off into Ali, but I wouldn't be surprised if Kira Hogan wasn't back at some point. Like maybe even Diamante. Like they, they do not strike me as people that Tony Khan is going to keep when their target their contracts are up. Um, they do Ring of Honor work. They've never done anything meaningful on Dynamite. Uh, Kara Hogan did a little bit with Jade Cargill, and that was about it. But um, no, Tasha is uh, she's poised to break out even further. It just we got her on TV so little in 2023, and who knows what the reason is for that. But we need more of her, and the division will greatly benefit. They still have Sue Young's graphic on the um, the website. It's been here for about three years. Um, probably not that long, two years, but um, I don't expect to see Su Young back in a TNA ring at any point. Um, then Zaya Brookside, you know, you know what? Let me let me go up to Ash by Elegance. I didn't, um, I didn't really get into her a whole lot. Rather than say she would be, you know, kind of at the top of the card. I was a Dana Brooke fan um, because I watched her when I watched. NXT and when I thought NXT was the best wrestling show on TV for that, you know, six, seven month period or whatever, where it was just a really, really hot developmental league before they were like, okay, let's start bringing all these people in from other companies. And um, Dana was someone that they really hyped up her debut. And then when the debut happened, it kind of was kind of a fart in the bucket. Like the match was not as good as people had expected. And she just never really got, much of a run, whether it was NXT, WWE, but there was something I always liked about her. Um, and I, you know, you listen to her interview. She's ex- very excited to be here. She's extremely excited. Trinity was one of the, the ones that actually recruited her over and said, Hey, this is the place for you. And we're just, you know, I'm excited because I know we're going to see a side of her and see, you know, maybe overall the gimmick in general, just something we haven't seen before and certainly something we haven't seen before from her. So um, I'm excited for what she's going to do that. She's, she's going to get a big push. She's going to get a monster push. I could, she's probably not going to lose any matches this year, but um, there's, you know, I I see in my comments, there's a lot of people that were not happy with this signing and I, I hate to break it to you. She might be the big signing Scott was talking about. Because there's no there's no confirmation at this point that uh, Nick Nemeth has signed. He might he he might be here for the run for the six seven month run. You know he did an interview recently talking about someone asked him about AEW. He goes, "I'm just focused on New Japan and TNA right now." He's like, "There's a match in T- in Japan that I really want to have." He's 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 about five or six in TNA. I really want to have. So it kind of shows you like. Okay, he see you know he's gonna be here maybe six months to a year. Like there's matches for him, but he may not see himself long term because there's not enough opponents. I don't know, but there's no confirmation on that. Like I hate to break it to you, Ash by Elegance might be the signing because Scott the Moore would not have backpedaled on Nick Nemeth because that 100 percent matches the criteria that he initially said about a big signing, and then he you know got on whatever he, he contacted. Sean Ross Sapp or whoever, and he backpedaled. You wouldn't have backpedaled for Nick Nemeth. So I hate to say it, Ash might be the big signing. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, you know, then finally, I want to talk Zaya Brookside. I thought she had a good showing at Ultimate X. I thought she had a good showing in her matches uh, with Tosh Steels. Um, I watched her in the Indies prior to the NXT UK or whatever the hell she did. And Always thought she was good, you know. Um, I think she's, I think she has the ability to really, really get over as a babyface. Um, I would be interested to see her and Alicia Edwards wrestle because they're similar in stature. Um, I would be interested to see that match. But um, yeah, I think I don't think this is the year that we're going to see Zaya at the top of the card. But I, I would think next year, I can see her winning the title at some point. But I, I'm I'm high on her. I think she's talented. I think she she has the chance to be the biggest baby face in the division. So like really get over as a baby face. Um, 
the Jordan the Jordan Grace heel turn that I that I had called for never happened. Um, I'm I'm confident that it would have happened if Trinity was sticking around longer. And I, you know, I'm shocked that the from from front to be, you know, from the beginning to the end, Trinity was about hugs and handshakes, and I was just positive someone was going to fuck her over at some point, and it just didn't happen. And on her way out the door, is still hugs and handshakes and tears, and it's really odd. But um, yeah, just to go back to what I said about Zaya, um, you know, I would love to see a match one day where Jordan Grace, the dominant heel champion, uh had to face Zaya Brookside in a, you know, underdog um, type of match, like some kind of main event bound for glory type of thing. Like, I think that would be a fun story, but you know, overall this division is, is in an okay place now, right now. It's not in a great place. Um, they also have havoc. You know, I, I mean, I only kind of talked about her and her Rosemary recently. Uh, I mean, earlier in the, in the upload, you know, she is, they're they're going back and forth between gimmicks. There's just there's just nothing to suggest though that they're just going to be at the top of the card. I just see them, you know, kind of staying in the tag team division. It's crazy that Rosemary has one knockouts championship under her belt. I mean, it's absolutely insane, you know. But they're building her legacy through tag team titles. So I, I just see those two knockout teams just wrestling each other all year. <laughs> I mean, what the hell else are you going to do? So. Um, you know, the Rosemary's popular, you know, Havoc is relatively popular, but you know, I just see, um, you know, I just see them staying where they are. There's, there's been no kind of push for them whatsoever, but, but, you know, overall it's deep. There's, you, you can create matches, you can create matches and feuds people care about, but you cannot replace Deanna Perrazzo, Trinity, Mickey James with who they have right now. You can with Jordan, and that's it. Ash might be able to get in there, but we have to see her in the ring. We have to see the gimmick. We have to see what she can do. But there's definitely a big signing coming. There there has to be. And when I say a big signing, it may be Tanil Dashwood again. It might be bringing in Angelina Love. It could be Allie. Um but they have to bring in a couple more people to replace who they lost. You know, so I, I would imagine um, whatever they're playing, paying Trinity is probably what Ash by Elegance is getting. Um, whatever they're paying. Let's see who else came in. Maybe whatever they're paying Deanna is, you know, the Zaya Brookside slot in the budget there, but they were still paying Mickey James. And now they so they they've got to have some money floating around um, that that's allocated for the knockout division. So I can see them swinging at at least one more person. You know, um, I don't know who that person is, but I, you know, I just I have to imagine the alleys come in. Um, I would love to see Angelina Love come in, but it seems like they're trying not to get too nostalgic. Like they're actually trying to build a a new division, but. Um, so how do they view Allie? Do, do they think she's too much part of the TNA pass to bring her in? I don't really know. Um, but there's going to be, I, I would imagine, some some free agents with the AEW women's division coming up soon. I don't think they have a shot at Camille. I don't think that's happening. She would have been tremendous for the division. I mean, her versus like Kylan King or something. They've done that in NWA, but if they did that in, in a TNA ring, that would be really good. Her versus Jordan would be really good. I just don't see that ultimately happening. But um, you know, AEW is going to, they're going to trim some fat this year. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. And I think a lot of that's going to come from the women's division. And that might be where they, they waited out a little bit. You know, I would take a Penelope Ford if she became a free agent. Um, I'm kind of think who else, I'm trying to think who else they have uh, lurking around there at the bottom of the card. But um, there's some, there's some people out there. You can always, always get new knockouts. You can always do it. But right now what they have I think is is a little top heavy at the moment. Um, so I, I think the division was in a better place last year, but this isn't too far off. It's just, it just feels like something's missing uh, just because of the departures, the injuries, like now you got to step in and you got to fill the blanks in somewhere. And 
I don't know exactly where they do that, how they do that, but uh, you know, I confident that they're going to, they're going to make one or two um, larger signings throughout the year. And, you know, the knockouts is going to uh, remain in relevance. Thanks for checking me out though, guys. Um, this was a little bit of a long of a podcast. You know, usually I try to keep a lot of, um, a lot of my content in the 10, 15 minute mark, but you know, this is something that uh, I enjoy talking about and looking forward to see what the knockouts do. And I've got more content coming your way. As I said, I was just, you know, really under the weather and you did not want to hear me with my nose plugged and nose running and all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. State of the knockouts. Talk to you guys soon.